Welcome to our review on intensive farming. So what we actually find with these intensive farms, this is what makes up a lot of farms around the world today. The whole purpose behind these intensive farms is to try to produce the maximum amount of food per hectare of land. And the reason behind this is that as the population of humans has increased over the years, the farms we've got have had to increase the amount of food they produce to meet the demands. There are a few advantages to using intensive farming. So the first one is that we've got a high yield. So that means we achieve the maximum production per hectare of land. And we're not going to be losing much of our actual crops because we'll be using chemicals like pesticides. We'll also have a low production cost because what we're able to do there is maximize the actual output from that area of land and use fertilizers to increase the growth of our plants. So the more that we can grow on that one bit of land, the less we'll actually have to pay for it in the shops. And finally, it's less labor intensive because we're going to use artificial chemicals and machines to take care of that land rather than having to rely on large numbers of people. However, there are some disadvantages associated here. If we think about the pesticides that we're using, then they could damage the environment if they're not used properly. If we think about the fertilizers, if we use too much soluble fertilizer on the land, it can run into the streams and lead to pollution through that process of eutrophication. If we're thinking about the battery farming in terms of the animals, then people believe it to be less humane and obviously it can also lead to rapid spread of diseases because they're very packed into a small area. We have a variety of different chemicals that we can use to kill different things in our fields and on our farms. So the pesticides, first of all, kill pests. The insecticides are going to kill insects, which may obviously cause damage by eating the crop or spreading disease among animals. Fungicides kill fungi, which could cause decay in plants or cause illness in different animals. And the herbicides kill the weeds, then the reason that we're going to kill off the weeds is because we don't want them competing with our crop plants for the water and the minerals on that land. If we think about our pesticides in a little bit more detail, then obviously our use of pesticides is going to reduce damage to the crop or the herd. So if we're thinking about obviously killing off the weeds, then it reduces competition. So that means that our crop plants have the maximum rate of photosynthesis, so they're going to grow the best. If we've got more plant material available at the end of our growth period, then that means that there's more available to pass on to the next link in the food chain. So what we're actually going to find is that the farmer is going to have a much greater yield and greater profit because less energy is being lost to pests at each stage of that food chain. And obviously that's more beneficial to us as the main consumers because if the farmer reduces his losses, then we will pay less for those items in the supermarket. There were some pretty significant problems with a certain type of pesticide in the past, and we're going to look at two problems now. So what we'll find is that some pesticides actually accumulate or build up in food chains. And there was this example of them called dioxins, and they don't break down. So what happened was they built up in the food chain and then they were starting to kill animals that were much higher up because they just build up in larger and larger quantities until finally it became toxic and killed them. As a result of this, they've now been largely banned around the world. The second type of pesticide that we're going to look at are the organophosphates. Now, these were insecticides that used to be used in sheep dips. And if you've ever seen a farmer putting a sheep through a sheep dip, then they end up in there as well in part. So as a result of that, what they started to notice in some farmers was they were developing these nervous system problems. And that was linked to the organophosphates found in those insecticides used in the sheep dips. Last thing we're going to consider is battery farming. Hopefully you know that battery farming is where large numbers of animals are actually kept inside. So they're all being reared inside, they're kept inside, all in relatively close confines. Now, what we find is because those animals are all packed nicely in and they're not moving around much, then they're warmer, so they're not wasting energy. But this is the big downside to it. A lot of people believe that it's far less humane 
because animals in their nature like to roam around. They like to wander around outside, pecking the ground with their chickens and scratching around. If they're in a little tiny cage, then obviously they can't do that. And what we can also see are some significant behaviour changes in those animals as well. So because of that less humane approach, some people believe it's not ethical to actually use battery farming as a method of producing our meat.